these guys are plain and simply broken, especially when you think about how hard the Straw Hats had to struggle to defeat a weaker opponent. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lilo, and today we're talking about the legendary greatness of Marine Ford. Stay steady in pursuit of your dreams and goals. You're born to win, you're made for greatness, and I definitely believe in you guys. Keep up the great work each and every day. 100,000 elite marine troops, the five remaining warlords, three intangible super dupers, the commander of all said super dupers, all battling one pirate crew that used to rival the pirate king's crew in its prime. Whitebeard's decked out with an additional 43 allied pirate crews, all clashing together in this one disgusting brawl to determine the fate of the entire one Piece world. That's what Marine Ford truly is. Marine Ford is a battle that could literally destroy the One Piece world, and there's numerous references to that made by civilians and Sengoku himself. And basically, all the civilians around the world are shivering their timbers at the idea of being wiped out as collateral damage from the Marine Ford War. This entire arc is Garp's worst nightmare coming true in HD. And if you compiled every Garp clip from this arc together and slapped a sadness filter on that puppy, you'd have an excellent try not to cry challenge. Ace is brought up to the platform to have all his secrets exposed to the world, then be executed. Right before this, Suru has a subtle moment where she tells Garp, this is not your fault, and Garp laughs away the pain. It's something subtle because it shows that Suru understood Garp's relationship with Ace, and so did Sengoku, so there's a few people who knew Garp's secret that were really close to him. Garp did a lot more to keep Ace and Luffy safe than most people realize. Nico Robin, for example, was hunting down and civilians tried to kill her her entire childhood. If it wasn't for Garp hiding Ace and Luffy with the Don the way he did, they would have had the exact same childhood. Ace was the son of Roger, and Garp kept that a secret from basically everyone for 20 years, even though Garp is known for being bad at keeping secrets. He didn't bring Ace to any marine training or missions with him, because if the secret got out that Ace was Roger's son, the marines would have killed him instantly, and proof of this is shown with Akainu killing civilians and other marines that get in the way of his idea of justice numerous times over. Basically, raising Luffy and Ace was like raising two Robins where the entire world would want to kill them if they knew their actual bloodline. But even still, Garp found a way for Ace and Luffy to both grow up and live happy, free lives. All the while, he was telling Ace to become a marine so he would never have to face this worst fear situation of Ace getting executed and made to be an example of. But Ace did not listen to Garp and here Ace is on the execution platform with Garp's worst fear coming true. Ace's real name was Gold D. Ace, but he changed his name to Portuguese D. Ace when Ace became a pirate. Ace's papa being the previous pirate king is revealed to the world. Ace's adopted father Whitebeard shows up ready to rumble. It's revealed that secretly this entire time, Whitebeard was raising Ace so that Ace could become the next pirate king. This is also most likely why Whitebeard made Ace second division commander so early, despite Ace being more relative to third division commanders in power level that we see in the new world. You can make a great argument that characters like Jack, Doflamingo, or Cracker could give Ace a very challenging fight, and some of them might even be able to give Ace the hands. Also, Oda reveals in an SBS that Whitebeard division ranks do not have authority over one another, and feats in Marine Ford heavily imply that Whitebeard commanders might not be completely ranked by strength anyway. There's a lot of things that imply it, such as Thatch's interactions with Ace, giving off a vibe that Thatch was stronger than Ace too, and Thatch was a 4th division commander. First thing Whitebeard does when he shows up at Marineford is attempt to one-shot the entire island. If it wasn't for the admirals, he might have killed everyone except the top tiers with his first attack. Marco spits a bar, saying anyone on the seas knows if you mess with the Whitebeard pirates, then all of the Whitebeard pirates are gonna show up and jump you. This is also referenced in recent chapters where CP0 states fighting any of the Straw Hats could cause a war because Luffy's a Yonko now. Izo is one of the Whitebeard commanders and he makes his first appearance here. I didn't even notice Izo when I first saw this, but years later I noticed him, which is awesome because he's a super important character in Wano, and honestly it proves that One Piece is the type of story you need to read multiple times, otherwise you miss very key pieces of information to the story. Diamond Jozu is capable of blocking a slash from Mihawk, Kizaru shoots numerous light 
light beams at Whitebeard, and Marco is able to fly in front of Whitebeard and block the light beams before they hit Whitebeard. So something to keep in mind, light speed in One Piece is a low tier reaction speed feat because pre time skip near death Zoro dodged numerous light speed air palms from Kuma when Zoro was so damaged he could barely even function. And then a lot of top tiers here in Marine Ford easily scale into dozens of times to even hundreds of times faster than this near death Zoro, thereby being dozens to even hundreds of times faster than light in terms of reaction speed. And this feat here from Marco is a good one to use for proving light speed travel speed in one piece for the top tiers as well. Think of reaction speed as how fast you can dodge or punch and travel speed as how fast you can run or fly in one piece. Also something to keep in mind is that devil fruits become more powerful as you train with them, meaning it's possible that Kizaru's light beams started out at light speed when he first ate the fruit, but due to decades of training and experience they're now much faster than light and travel speed, especially when you consider that hockey makes you many times more powerful on top of that as well. It's an interesting thing to debate, but I wanted to put that out there. Mythical zone fruits are stated to be even more rare than Logia fruits. Akainu implies that the original plan was for the admirals to stay near their chairs and defend the position from there, but Whitebeard was so powerful that he made all three admirals break position at the very beginning of the battle. Ors Jr. is assumed to be a descendant of the continent polar legendary supergiant Ors from Thriller Bark. Only difference is Ors Jr. is still alive, has his own original moveset, and can be scaled to being even more powerful than the zombie Ors that the Straw Hats fought in Thriller Bark. Ors Jr. was capable of one-shotting a Vice Admiral, someone stated by Ivankov to be stronger than even Impel Down Luffy. It took the Straw Hats everything they had just to defeat zombie Ors back in Thriller Bark, yet this stronger Ors Jr. gets absolutely throttled and genuinely low diff destroyed here in Marine Ford. Shows how absolutely disgusting the average power level here is in Marine Ford. It truly is a battle of the strongest characters, which is why it's nicknamed the Battle of the Best. Kuma detonates Ors Jr. and Dofi slices his leg off. These guys are plain and simply broken, especially when you think about how hard the Straw Hats had to struggle to defeat a weaker opponent. All of the five remaining warlords get through the entirety of Marine Ford without bleeding a single drop of blood, except for one of them who gets kicked off the warlords for being too weak. Kobe has an epic line while he's quaking in his boots, looking at the wild brawl of Marine Ford, and it honestly explains Marine Ford super well. Kobe states, so many people who are so much stronger than me are getting swatted like flies. And this young lad is exactly right. And if any of the Straw Hats were there too, including Luffy at this time, this same line would apply to all of them as well. That's one of the things I love about Marine Ford. It shows you how wild the new world is in One Piece, and it shows you very clearly that the Straw Hats are not ready for it, and they're not invincible, even though we thought they were for so long. The crushing reality is they're just straight up nowhere near ready for this level of power. And I love that Oda doesn't give the Straw Hats any friendship power-ups either. He's like, nah, you guys are fodder and you're just gonna have to deal with getting folded up. I I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> That's Oda in a nutshell, bro. But we'll continue with this and a lot more in the next video.